Okay guys, so in this video tutorial, we are looking at simplify fractions, okay, and it's a White Rose Maths PowerPoint made explicitly by White Rose Maths, okay, so this is fully copyrighted, okay, yeah, and I got this obviously from the White Rose Maths, so White Rose Maths, yeah, obviously take the full credit, yeah, and obviously take full responsibility, yeah, for this video, okay, yeah, and it's not actually affiliated to me, okay, yeah, but I'm obviously just, just obviously making a video here on how to obviously simplify fractions. Now, this video is appropriate for Key Stage 1 students, Key Stage 2 students, Key Stage 3 students, GCC Foundation Tier Maths, okay, students, uh, Functional Skills Level 1, Functional Skills Level 2 Maths, of course, um, Entry Level 1, okay, Entry Level 2, Entry Level 3 Maths, okay, for Functional Skills. And it's also appropriate, yeah, for Entry Level Maths, okay, for the AQA exam board for NXL for OCR, okay, so it's appropriate for functional skill learners as well, okay, so students that are doing functional skills or even adult learners, okay, this video will be appropriate for you, okay, so, okay, get ready, okay, white rose maths, okay. This is the our start case. So this is question number one. Complete the equivalent fraction. Four tenths is two over what? Well, four divided by two is two. Whatever I do to the top, I must do the same to the bottom. Ten divided by two is five, guys. Okay. So whatever I do to the numerator, I must do the same to the denominator. Okay. Numerator is the top part of my fraction. Denominator is my bottom part of my fraction. Question number two. Complete the equivalent fraction. Okay. One third is how many ninths? Well, three times three is nine. And on the top of the numerator, I'm going to do one times three. Okay, one lot of three or one times three is just three. So one third is the same as i.e. equal to i.e. equivalent to three ninths. Okay, so they represent the same amount. Okay, the word equivalent means yeah, it's exactly the same. Okay, so it's the same size and or portion that you're taking. Okay, question number three, complete the equivalent fraction. So something over three, so something thirds is how many? Yeah, sorry, is eight twelfths. So three lots of four. So three times something is twelve. Three times four is twelve. So going backwards, I'm going to divide by four. Okay, because that's the opposite operation or opposite process to times it by four. Eight divided by four is two. Or going from left to right, two times four is eight. Okay, so this is our answer for question number three. Okay. So what was maths answers? Okay, four tenths equals two fifths, one third equals three ninths, and two thirds equals eight twelfths. Okay, so that's the end of our start. Let's learn, okay, white rose maths. Can you imagine what these fractions look like? A half, okay, so that's the bar model for a half, one out of two parts, one quarter we say, or one out of four. That's going to be equal to a quarter, three fifths, so it will be split into fifths, and then you'll have three bars filled in, okay. 17 25ths, okay, again, 25, you're like little squares or rectangles, yeah, and you're, you're obviously colouring 17, okay, so think of the, the numerator here is how much you are taking out of the total, yeah, obviously post possible like number of, yeah, like outcomes, yeah, so which is the denominator, okay, how many parts in total you have, that's the denominator, 12 48ths, okay, hopefully you're happy with this one, that actually simplifies to a quarter, because dividing top and bottom by 12, okay, if you're interested, okay, so dividing top by 12, 12 divided by 12 is just 1, okay, anything divided by itself is equal to 1, and 48 divided by 12 okay, is equal to 4, okay, because 4 lots of 12 is 48, okay, but this is the bar model to show it, okay, so you can see here clearly that they're exactly the same, okay, yeah, so it takes up the same amount, okay, it's the exact same fraction, it's what we call equivalent fractions, okay, so yeah, it takes up like the same amount of space, okay, on your bar model, Okay, so this is like, yeah, like a little fraction grid here. So you've got one, a half, a third, a quarter, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, an eighth, a ninth, and a tenth. Okay, now you can clearly see here that I've got two lots of a half makes, makes one. Okay, three lots of a third makes one. Four lots of a quarter makes one. Five lots of a fifth makes one. Six lots of a sixth make one. Seven lots of a seventh make one. Eight lots of 
an eighth make one, nine lots of a ninth make one, and ten lots of tenth make one. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, so one eighth and one eighth equals two eighths, okay, which simplifies to a quarter. So use fraction to simplify this case okay, so five tenths. So looking on here, so five tenths is from here to here. Now, if you draw like a little line down here, hopefully you can see that that's equal to a half. Okay, so if we divide top and bottom by five, we get one half. Okay, so this is all to do with finding highest common factor or factors that go into both of these numbers. Okay, so five is the highest common factor between five and ten. It's the highest number that goes into both five and ten simultaneously, okay, with no remainders. Okay, six tenths. Well, they're both even actually, so I can divide top and bottom by two. So I'm going to get three on the top. On the bottom, ten divided by two is going to equal to five. So the answer is going to be three fifths. Okay, but let's just obviously check it on the diagram. Okay. So six tenths. Okay, so let's just obviously change colour here. So six tenths, yeah, think of this box, the blue box is this. Okay. I'm going to draw like a little line up. Bang, there we go. So, yeah, it crosses obviously there. So, if you look at how many fifths I've got, okay, so it takes up one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth, which equals three fifths. Okay, so that's my answer for that one. Now, this one here, actually, yeah, obviously five sevenths. So, this one doesn't actually simplify because there are no common factors between five and seven. The factors of five are one and five. Okay, 5 doesn't obviously go into 7 cleanly, because it has a remainder, and the factors of 7 are 1 and 7, okay, 1 is what I call like, yeah, a co-prime, okay, obviously, yeah, divided by 1, or times by 1, doesn't actually change my answer, but 5 7 if you're interested, so that would be this whole box here, yeah, if you follow my little box arrow, okay, so yeah, it's obviously done in blue there, okay, if you, if you draw like a little line here, even to the top, and even to the bottom, Okay, there's nothing that obviously coincides with that fraction. Okay, so that one, yeah, cannot actually be simplified. Okay, because there are no common factors between five and seven. Okay, so make sure, yeah, that you're obviously happy with that. Okay, because the highest common factor is 1, which we class that as co-prime. Okay, dividing by 1 doesn't actually change my answer at all. Okay, so white rose maths answer. Okay, yes, yeah, so look at the green arrows now. So look at the arrows. Okay. So 5 tenths is equal to a half. Okay, looking at yeah the little bar model six tenths look at the dashed blue line that's equal to three fifths and this last one five sevenths red line actually yeah, so red dashed red line there's nothing yet obviously coincides with okay so five sevenths is okay cannot be simplified okay yeah because the highest common factor is equal to one okay and we class that yeah as co prime okay yes yeah, so if you just yeah so it's classed as co prime okay because dividing by 1 doesn't actually change my answer or answers, okay? Dividing by 1 times by 1 doesn't change my answer or answers. Adding 0 and subtracting 0, yeah. Obviously, don't obviously change my answers actually as well, yeah, in maths. Factors of 5, that, that's going to be 1 of 5. So remember that factor is a number that goes into another number cleanly with no remainder. Okay, 2 doesn't go into 5 fully, nor does 3, nor does 4, because it has a remainder left over. Factors of 7 are going to be 1 and 7. Okay, because 1 goes into 7 7 times, and 7 goes into 7 once. Okay, 1 one goes into 5 5 times, and 5 goes into 5 once, okay, or 1 time, or 1 times. Okay, here we go. Okay, so for 18, what do we have? Well, for 18, the factors of 18, okay, are 1 and 18, because 1 times 18 is 18, or 18 times 1 is going to be 18, okay? 
two times nine is going to be 18. Three, three times six is going to be 18. So four times something. Well, four doesn't actually go into it cleanly yet. So four times three and a half, actually, yeah. But four is not a factor, okay? Because, yeah, I have to be times it by a whole number or integers together, okay? So the only factors of 18 are as follows. One, two, three six nine and 18 okay they are the only six numbers that go into 18 cleanly with no remainder okay if it has a remainder then it's not a factor okay so remember that yeah for today's video lesson okay okay five sevens okay so one and five one and seven okay divide by one year obviously change my answer okay so five yeah seven cannot be simplified any further okay five seven yeah is in its simplest form we say yeah so simple form okay six nines okay so you're happy that that will equal to two thirds okay so i've divided top and bottom by three okay i've divided top and bottom of the fraction by three six divided by three is two and nine divided by three is three okay so this is how i simplify a fraction okay i'm looking for what we call the highest common factor that goes into both numbers okay yeah so it's knowing your factors of these two numbers okay or your numbers okay, in general okay so factors of six are one two three and six facts of nine are going to be one three and nine the highest common factor okay is going to be three Okay, remember, divided by 1 does not change my answer, okay? So, what is called co-prime? Okay, simplify the fraction using the bar models, okay? Well, I can divide this, okay, top and bottom by 4, okay? Because 4 is the highest common factor that goes into both 12 and 16 cleanly without any remainders. 12 divided by 4 is going to be 3, and 16 divided by 4 is going to be 4, so I'm going to have 3 quarters, okay? So I'm going to split that into quarters, okay? So every 4, I'm going to have there, so 1, 2, 3, 4, that's another one there, another one there, okay? So, yeah, you'll have one, okay, which represents obviously four sixteenths, okay. So, one quarter represents four sixteenths, okay. And then another quarter will obviously re represent, yeah, obviously two six, uh, sorry, eight sixteenths, okay, which will obviously equal to a, a half, okay. And then this last one, I'm going to have another four sixteenths, okay, which is going to be another quarter, Okay, there we go. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense, guys. Okay, and if you add a quarter and a quarter and a quarter together, you will indeed get three quarters. Okay, and if you add four sixteenths and four sixteenths and four sixteenths, you will get twelve sixteenths. Okay, so it's knowing your highest common factor or factors, okay, but of course, please do utilize and use a bar model, okay, if that helps you and if, if that's appropriate, yeah, and you see fit and necessary, okay. Six, okay, and simplify six, eight, yeah, by dividing it by two again. Okay, so again, guys, yeah, it, it, yeah, another like, little point here. So you might not immediately spot what the highest common factor is, but if they're both even, I can always half it. Okay, yeah, so an, another like, little point here. If they're both even, I can half it. I can divide it by two, okay? So you don't have to simplify it in one go, okay? But, yeah, from my end, yeah, it's trying to obviously teach you about what I mean by highest common factor or highest common factors of numbers, okay? that okay now the model not using the models okay so there we go okay so looking at your highest common factor that's common factor is going to be four so divide top and bottom by four i get three quarters okay tiny has been asked to simplify 35 fortieths okay so okay so it's done it here actually yeah so looking at factors of 35 yeah, if you're not too sure okay now, because it ended a five and a, and a zero, okay, I'm, I'm gonna yeah be able to divide it by five here. But the factors of thirty five are one, five, seven, and thirty five. Okay, so they are my only four factors that go into thirty five. Okay, so you got four numbers there. Okay, factors of forty are gonna be one, two, four, five. 
8, 10, 20, okay, and 40, okay, there are no other numbers here that go into 40, okay, other than these numbers. Now, the highest number from these two lists, okay, is going to be the number 5, okay, because 5 goes into 35 seven times with that remainder, and 5 goes into 48 times, okay, 5 lots of 40, sorry, 5 lots of 8 is 40, or 8 lots of 5 is going to be 40, or 7 lots of 5, yeah, it gives you 35, okay, so divide top and bottom by 5, okay, and I'm going to get 7 eighths, okay, so Tina has actually made a mistake here, okay, because she divided the top by 5 and the bottom by 4. Remember, when you're dividing in maths, okay, when you're simplifying here or just dividing here like fractions by a number, okay, whatever you do to the top, you must do the same as here to the bottom, okay? So this is the correct answer, okay? Factors of 35 here are 1, 5, 7, 35. Factors of 40 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, 20, and 40. Okay, one is obviously a common factor. Remember, obviously, one is what I call co-prime. Okay, divided by one does not change my answer. However, five is common in both. So five is what I call the highest common factor. Okay, and that goes into both 35 and 40. It, it goes into 35 seven times. It goes into 48 times. Okay, so the answer is seven eighths. Okay, that's the answer to this question. Okay, so whatever you divide the top by, you must do the same to the bottom. Okay, yeah, and vice versa. Whatever you divide the bottom by, you must divide by the top, okay, by the same number. Okay, or divide the top, yeah, by the same number, sorry. Okay. Right, guys, that's the end of today's video on obviously simplifying fractions. So hopefully you found it useful. Hopefully you found it informative. If you did, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, don't forget to click that bell icon, okay, so you can be notified on my uploads. Okay, and I'll see you all inside the next video. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care, all the best, and I'll see you soon. Okay, bye for now. Take care. Good luck with your studies and good luck with your, your revision, guys. Yeah, if you if you're doing key stage one SATs, key stage two SATs, or upcoming GC exams, or even AS or A2. Yeah, maths exams, okay, or even other exams, okay. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon, okay. Bye for now. Take care. All the best.